I am here today to tell you that the Chevrolet Malibu is not dead. Despite being rumored to have been killed off for quite some time now, Chevrolet has actually committed to it by bringing out a 2021 model year. It surprised me, and I'm sure it even surprised people at GM that this car still is on the fleet. Our spotlight is on this 2021 Chevrolet Malibu LT. This is the second from the top when it comes to the trims here in Canada. The Premier would be above it with a lot more kit, but this one is pretty well equipped. $35,508 Canadian and about $30,150 in the US configured the same way. Luckily, when it comes to this vehicle, it is configurable identically both here and in the US. So you're looking at about 30 grand US for this 35,000 here. So what is new for 2021? Well, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is the big new feature. We're starting to see this roll out across a number of manufacturers and a number of different vehicles since the first one that we tested a few years back was BMW. So it's nice to see that. And aside from that, you basically have a sport edition trim available on the LT. This one is not equipped with it. And the new buckle to drive feature is added into the teen driver system. Aside from that, there's just a new paint color. Now the Malibu received a facelift in 20 19, it updated the front and rear end, got a new grille, new headlights, and new LED tail lamps. This model uses a 1.5 liter engine producing 163 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque, and it now uses a CVT instead of the six-speed transmission on the model before. Now the 2 liter engine that comes with the Premier produces 250 horsepower, 260 pound feet of torque and comes with GM's new 9 speed automatic transmission. So you do get quite a bit more if you go up along with some other features, but we're looking at the one that I think most people are going to be looking at if they're in the market for a pretty affordable mid-size sedan. Now I say that there was a facelift for 2019, there were a couple things that they removed. We usually like to look at that, anytime a vehicle comes out we want to see what's changed, but also what the manufacturer is stripping out that the consumer might not notice. There's two things that I've noticed from a 2019 onward that were present on the 2018. They've removed the rear door keyless entry buttons, so before you could lock and unlock the car from all four doors, now it's only on the front two doors. It's probably a few dollars that GM is saving, but you know if they produce 150,000 of these, I guess it adds up for them. Also on the non-premier trims like our LT, it went from having a color driver information computer in the cluster to a black and white smaller screen. So you actually lose out on that. There's less information available. However, if you go up to the premier, you get an eight inch color screen that blends in a little bit better. So you lose some and you gain some. If you're going all out, going for the top end trim, you benefit. But if you're like most people buying something that isn't that premier, you're losing out on a few features. Now the two major misses as far as I'm concerned when it comes to this trim at this price point is you don't have LED headlights, they are halogens, not very good overall, and you also don't have active cruise control. You have to go up to the Premier for that, but like the Chevrolet Bolt EV that we featured, it does have distance recognition, so it knows how close the vehicle is in front of you, but you just don't get the satisfaction of active cruise control. Now, if you go up to the Premier, you're spending about another $3,140. You get navigation, LED headlights, they would trim plastic on the interior, but you don't get the rims that come on this Midnight Edition, as we have black rims, black bow ties, and black badges throughout. You can configure everything, but those rims are about $5,000. So it doesn't really make sense, but if you were to go up for another $3,000 at about $38,000 Canadian, this would be pretty competitive with the other mid-size front-wheel drive sedans available. Now let's take this on the road. We'll talk about a bit of the interior as we go on our road test and everything else about it, and what else you need to know if you're in the market for a mid-size family sedan and might want to consider the not dead Malibu. Now I know last week when we had the Chevrolet Bolt EV, I said that we were starting off our coverage of winter and unfortunately we were not able to drive this car yesterday because it snowed here and it still has all season tires on it. And I'm telling you right now, all season tires did not cut it in Quebec. Anywhere that it snows, you really need to have winter tires. It's why it's so important, why we always talk about every single year, why you got to have it. Because this car, I just left it in the garage. And even the car that we had with all-wheel drive and all seasons sucked in the snow. So I don't have any tire specs or anything for you today. We're not doing any winter testing. We're hoping it's going to stay nice and clear. But there's a reason why I booked 
this Chevrolet Malibu because I thought this was going to be dead this year. I wanted to get as many of the sedans on this show that were being killed off as possible. That's why we did the Ford Fusion Energy a few months ago because it's dead after this year. And while the Malibu hadn't gotten any official word, there was always these rumors. Some sites and bloggers had talked about how this was going to be the end of the Malibu and then just boop, dropped like that, there's a 2021. Dealerships are even receiving them and you can buy it. It's crazy <laughs> that they are still holding on to this because everybody else has killed off their cars. Chevrolet only makes two cars, I mean two regular cars. You can't really consider the Camaro or the Corvette. They're, they're cars, but I mean, like, let's be honest, you're not buying that as a family hauler. You're either buying this or you're buying the other car that they make. The Spark, all the Buicks are gone. Cadillac still has the CT5 and the CT4 here in North America. CT6 was killed off after 2020, but they're still making this. A couple little changes, as I mentioned. The inside here with the LT trim isn't bad overall for about a $35,000 car. It's mostly plastic with like some leatherette trim on some spots. Uh, there's not too much to complain about. Infotainment system, it works. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are the way to go since there's no embedded navigation. You just have a regular six speaker audio system on here. So personally, I would go up to the Premier. I know that it's about a $3,000 difference, but I feel like you're getting that value. If you don't go with the black bow ties and other things like that, you can kind of save a little bit when it comes to the cost, but you're still getting a pretty decent car. Performance on this, even with the 1.5 liter engine, isn't bad at all. I've had no issues getting up to speed or driving around town. It's adequate, but again, with that 250 horsepower engine, you can have a little bit more fun with it. Now, one of the other reasons why I wanted to drive the Malibu is because I was so wrong in my biases and my preconceived notions of what the Chevrolet Impala had to offer. Back in 2018, we drove that, and I don't even know if I mentioned it in the video, but I actually only had that car essentially for one day because I had two vehicles booked that week, the Impala, and then I had another vehicle, and I thought, well, the Impala doesn't have much to offer. I'm not gonna waste my time with it. I'm literally just gonna drive it to one location, pick up the next press car, and then spend my week with the one that I think I'm gonna have more fun with. And then I brought the Impala home to film it, and boy, oh boy, was I wrong. It was a really nice car. And when you consider the price point for it, you were getting quite a bit in a full-size segment for not a whole lot. I mean, it's a little bit more than this. So it's disappointing that GM killed it off, and I'm disappointed that I had just thought it was a boring car not to even worry about, and I was proven wrong. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to book this Malibu, to see if that same magic could take place here. And I do like it. Is it my favorite midsize sedan in the segment? No, but it's also not the worst. I, I do like the ergonomics of it. It's good. I have a good seating position. Seats are comfortable. Visibility is good all around. My daughter has plenty of space in the back seat. Okay, so it's a little light on tech for this trim. And at this price point, as I mentioned outside, LED lights would kind of be, I think if it had the LED lights, I'd be pretty happy. Navigation as well. I mean, that's not an overly expensive thing to add on. I mean the dealerships and manufacturers mark up the price on it, but the actual cost of it's not too bad. And then some of those small things that they removed from the previous model year, you know, the previous pre-facelift version, that's a bit of a bummer. You can tell that a car maker is starting to phase out a product when they are stripping out little things that they hope the consumers won't notice. And to be fair, I mean, if you're coming from literally any other car on the planet and you're buying this for the first time, then you would never know. But if you are somebody who's coming from, say, a 2016 Malibu, you're thinking, hey, you know, it's been five years, should I upgrade to the new one? You will notice that you're missing a couple of those small features if you go with the same trim. You go to the Premier, you're getting a whole lot more. So you win some, you lose some. But why are you going to consider this Chevy Malibu? Well, if you like a car like me, then you're going to appreciate the way that it drives and rides. It's very smooth on the road, and it's actually pretty quiet in here. For a mid-size sedan, this is what you would expect, but it's not like a premium car. It's just your run-of-the-mill Chevrolet, and it, the interior sound noises 
are good for what I would want out of this price point. So I'm very happy with that and everything is comfortable about it when I'm on the road. I don't have any issues. The ride and handling is good even in the winter. As I mentioned, we're not trying to go into too much snow, but it has done the job for me and it's been what I would expect. So if you're looking for an American market vehicle, this is definitely one to consider. The exterior look is good too. I like the front end. The rear end with the updated taillights has a nice look to it. Again, the LED headlights would have been a nice thing to have, but overall, it's a handsome looking car. And in this black, it's all blacked out, the badges, everything, and it looks pretty cool. I do like it. Kind of feel a little bit like a cop car here, because the police here in Quebec, they do use Malibus as undercover vehicles, so you can almost feel like that. But honestly, it's really good on the inside here. I think you get pretty much what most people are looking for. I know that I do nitpick with a lot of the features, but yeah, LED lights are a safety thing, but the rest of it is really just nitpicking on my part as I want a little bit more, but you're getting what you kind of need out of a vehicle. Plus you, know, you have the panoramic sunroof, which is a nice plus space is good. And you do have the option to go up to the premier if you want some more power. So it depends on what you want out of a vehicle. I think it's really good for a Chevrolet to continue to offer this. That's one of the reasons why I'm excited to be driving this because it still exists. You can still buy it in 2021. So if you are in the market for a sedan, this is great. Maybe it's not gonna be the one that you're going to buy, but because it still exists, it's pushing the other automakers to do better. That's why we're seeing so many new cars for 2020 offer all wheel drive in this segment because there is competition to push this market forward. Without these cars, you're kind of losing out. So we need this to exist. It's great that they made it for 2021. It has ticked the boxes for me in quite a few places and there really isn't anything to complain about. Having multiple trims and multiple options available, that's a nice plus. It means you're not limited to just one offering. You've got some choice.